this was an age of dual meats. And so it was a specific purpose of the restoration meats that made them stand out. There was a fundraising aspect to them, and yet they certainly caught on. It's interesting that we were going to carry on with the Bowerman Classic, because once we were done with the West Grandstand, we kept the meat going anyway, um, just in a different form. So it's almost as though the restoration meats are the grandparents of the Diamond League meats. Yeah, so the origins of the pre-classic actually coincide with the building of the West Grandstand. 1972, we host the Olympic trials here um, in Eugene. It's a really big event. It's a great event for the community. The city of Eugene Fire Marshal says, host event that the West Grandstand is basically condemned, that it needs to be taken down. This mud hole filled with debris is all that's left of the old West Grandstand. And so for this community that had just hosted, you know, the Olympic trials, um, if they ever wanted to have bigger events or continue to host the Olympic trials, they were going to have to figure out how they were going to rebuild a grandstand. There are a lot of major events that will be here in the future and providing we have a facility for it. And that's why it is a priority project for all of us. That coincides with Bill Bowerman retiring and he takes up this aggressive fundraising um, drive to not only reimagine what Hayward Field is going to look like, but then also really tapping into the community. So tapping into the Oregon Track Club and also getting pledges and fundraising support for building a new grandstand, a kind of a new version of Hayward Field. We're in the process of completing our fund drive and the design. This is the new design and it's one of wood, which I think is a, just a tremendous thing for it because Oregon is wood and wood is Oregon. They were coming up short with some of the pledges and community support. When the old grandstand was torn down last September, fundraisers headed by former track coach Bill Bowerman collected $600,000 to build a new one, and their target date was for the 1974 season. But to everyone's surprise, when it came time for the contractor's bid, the fundraisers found that they were $200,000 short. So with the athletic department, they come up with an idea to host a Hayward Field restoration meet. So put another meet on the calendar, have the opportunity for the community to see you know, high caliber athletes like they had the year before. So it was not only bringing out Steve Prefontaine, but other really top notch, high caliber athletes to have another meet here at Hayward Field. And ticket prices for that would go towards the reconstruction efforts. I think we'll have a good crowd, though we're not going quite to the extent that we have some other meets as far as uh, people are coming in, but we'll, we'll have a good crowd. The West Grand Stand gets torn down in 73. They're rebuilding in 73 and 74. So they have two Hayward Field restoration meets. There was a lot of hype about this meet. It was designed to raise money, but in order to raise money, you need to bring in the fans. And that's, that's what they did. Super Mile World High Hurdle Record serve final rights for packed stands. I attended the, the restoration meet, was the 74 edition. That was a great meet. Yeah, it was a meet with Pre making a big comeback on Frank Shorter and the 5000 and my college uh, teammate Rick Woolhutter breaking his own world record in the 880. Before 75, up until and including 75, you had Pre and any meet, even a workout, would draw fans. So I think they raised a lot of money and had a wonderful meet. I have no privileged information about how well it did financially, but the place was jammed. It had kind of a can you top this atmosphere to it. They built the West Grandstand in 1975, and it's going to be Instead of the Hayward Field restoration meet, it's going to be the Bill Bowerman Classic. And then in 75, uh, we, uh, we drove out here like crazy to get to the meet, and, uh, but Pre was already gone by that time. He thought. He dreamed, he worked. 
He thought that it was only right that I should share with the pace. I did, and that was that. I was his friend. From then on, I always had a strong feeling of loyalty surround me whenever Steve came around. For just as he was defiant towards those who hindered him, he was absolutely loyal to those of us fortunate enough to have found ourselves his friends. He was our glory, and we were his. And it's up to us now to hold in mind clearly, to remember him as he touched us and infuriated us and challenged us. There are two minutes left. He could run a half mile. Bill and Frank and I are going to take our places in the stands and let us all in our own way silently commend free to the AG. Fontaine's passing, um, about a week after that, Bill Bowerman puts out a press release saying, no, we're going to rename it the Prefontaine Classic in honor of him.